Hi all, welcome to CSEC Physics with Mr. Charles. Physics is a branch of science that deals with the properties of matter and energy, the study of nature, okay? It is different from chemistry and biology in that it focuses a lot on mechanics, heat, light, other radiation, sound, electricity, magnetism, and the structure of atoms. So to begin our journey in physics, we will start with fundamental quantities and base unit. Okay, that's a very good place to start. Let's look at our learning objectives. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to recall the fundamental quantities of the international system or the SI. Explain the significance of units in measurement. Recall that the value of a quantity is usually expressed as a product of a number and a unit. Okay, a product of a number and a unit. And then finally, you should be able to recall the base units of the fundamental quantities in the SI system. Now, fundamental quantities are used to derive all other quantities. Okay, so they are used to derive all other quantities. To the left of the screen, we have a table with the fundamental quantities and the base SI units. Okay, so we have the fundamental quantities are mass, length, time, current, temperature, amount of substance, luminous intensity. Okay, the symbols, we have a combination of capital and common letters. So the symbol for mass is M, it's measured in kilograms. And the symbol for kilograms is common K, common G. The symbol for length is common L. Okay, so let me just put a note here. This is a common L. Okay, this is not an, a capital I, so common Okay. You have to the the casing of the letters must be written accurately. So this is a common L. So when you're writing it, you would write it like this, right? In, in cursive, okay? So the symbol for length is common L. It's measured in meters, okay? And the symbol for meters is common M. The symbol for time is common T. And again, when you're writing it, you would write it in cursive, okay? common t it's measured in seconds all right the symbol for seconds is common s so at no point should i see you writing a capital s for seconds current is measured okay in ampere its symbol is a capital i so that's a capital i okay the symbol for ampere is capital a Temperature is measured in Kelvin, okay? It's symbol, the symbol for temperature is capital T, and the symbol for Kelvin is capital K. Amount of substance, common N, it's measured in the unit for amount of substance is mole, okay? One mole, two moles. The base unit is mole, M-O-L, without the E, okay? Luminous intensity, is measured in candela. The symbol for luminous intensity is common L, right? Subscript V. Okay, and the symbol, the, the symbol for the base un unit candela is common C, common D. Okay. So make sure you get the the casing of the letters correct. So if it's a capital letter, you put a capital letter. If it's a common letter, you put a common letter. Okay. Now, temperature, okay, temperature, another symbol for temperature is theta, okay? This is not the standard symbol for temperature, but it's a symbol that is used, and, and temperature is usually measured in degrees Celsius. Uh, this is not an SI unit, however. Degrees Celsius is not an SI unit, but... It is acceptable for use when expressing common temperatures together with SI units. Okay, so keep that in mind. 
Okay. Now, what are the significance of units? Well, first of all, we need units to give meaning. Okay. To give meaning to the expressed values. So it's not just enough to say the mass of a block is 1,000 grams or 1,000 kilograms. Okay. Or uh, whatever. You have, it's not just enough to say that the mass of a block is 1,000, sorry. Okay, it's not just enough to say the mass of a block is 1,000. You have to put the, the unit after the 1,000. So if it's grams, kilograms, whatever. So we, we need units, okay, to, to give meaning, to express the values for physical quantities, okay? So it's not just enough to put the number. Units are also useful in comparing physical quantities, okay? So for instance, if you have five kilograms, you can compare that to 100 grams. Okay, know which one is, is of a greater mass, mass, right? So we need units to compare physical quantities, okay? Also, units are necessary for standardization purposes. So for instance, because the, the SI unit for, for, gram, for mass is kilograms, whichever part of the world you are in, one kilogram will always be one kilogram, okay? It's standardized, that's a standardized unit. Now, there are some things you should note, okay? It is very important that you, when you're writing the units, as I stated before, you should write it in the correct upper case, or lower case okay letter for the symbols for, for example k upper case is the symbol for kelvin which is the unit for temperature however if you write a common key that's something different that's a lower case key and it's it is not the symbol for temperature for for kelvin the unit of te temperature it is the symbol for kilo right, which is a prefix, as you would realize in a subsequent lesson, okay? So make sure when you are writing the, the symbols for the different units and quantities that you write them in the correct casing, okay? If it's a capital letter, you write a capital letter. If it's a common letter, you write a common letter, okay? Do not write a capital for a common and a common for a capital. Avoid writing plurals. Avoid plural, pr pluralizing for units, okay? Do not place an S at the end of the symbol for the unit. So for example, if you have one kilogram, okay? Everybody would be okay with that, one kilogram. But for some reason, when it comes to, well, not for some reason, you don't say two kilogram, you say two kilograms. However, when you are writing it, you write 2 kg, okay? And, and that should be a common key, okay? I just make it a little big, all right? Let me make it over, okay? That should be 2 kg, common K, common G, okay? 2 kg, good? So you don't say two, not because it's two kilograms, you have to put an S in the end here. No, this is wrong. Okay, it, it is simply two kg. So you do not pluralize the symbols for the units. Okay, if it's one more than one, the symbol remains the same. Because if you put an S in the end, what this would mean something different because S is the symbol for seconds. Okay, if you go back, you realize that the symbol for, for second is S, right? Which is the unit for what? Second is the unit for time, okay? So if you put an S in the end there, then basically you're saying that's two kilograms second, okay? And that would be incorrect. So keep that in mind. Do not pluralize the units, good? Let's continue. Now, sorry. Now, how do we express quantities? The value of a quantity is expressed as the product of a number and a unit. 
okay, the product of a number and a unit. So for exam example, if you have a force of 100 Newtons, 100 is a number and Newton is a unit. Okay, Newton is a unit for force. Force is not a basic quantity or fundamental quantity, but we would come to force only looking at derived quantities, okay? But as an example, here we have an example where you have a number, right? And a unit, okay? So the quantity is expressed as a product of a number and a unit. Same here, the number here is 50, the unit is grams, okay? So mass equals 50 grams, good? However, not all quantities have a unit. Some quantities are dimensionless, okay? Dimensionless means that they have no units, okay? Um, and that's because they are, these quantities are ratios, okay? And whenever you're dealing with ratios, there is no units. So they are ratios of, well, I shouldn't say no units, but when you are dealing with ratios of like quantities, okay? then the units would cancel off, okay? The units would cancel off. R relative density of mercury, for instance, is 13.6, okay? There is no unit, okay? Because the unit would have canceled mm -hmm. off. Refractive index also, 1.5, no units. The units have canceled off. Also, if you take a quantity and you divide it by its unit, it would give you a pure number. Now what is that what is actually a pure number it is a number without a unit at the end of it okay so if for example you have a force of 100 newton and you divide the force of 100 newton by newtons you'll get 100 and let me show you why okay because the force is 100 newton f is 100 newton okay 100 capital N for Newton, not common N, over Newton. What would happen is that, let me make my N better than that. Okay. What would happen is that the N's would cancel off each other. Okay. The N's would cancel off each other. This one would cancel off this one, so you'd be left with 100. Okay, and that's a pure number. So whenever you divide a quantity by its unit, you get a pure number. Okay, keep that in mind. Now, because of that, whenever we are heading graphs and tables, or whenever we are writing in the headings for graphs, for tables and graphs, we write it like this. So the quantity slash the unit so for instance in this table here you have force here force f over n okay f is the quantity symbol n is the unit symbol so then there is no need to write in the symbol inside the table again because whatever is inside the table should be pure numbers okay right so the, the the unit should only be in the heading of the table same here the units should only be along the axes of the graph okay there should be no units written in here good so whenever a quantity is divided is divided by its unit you get a pure number okay and a pure number is a number without a unit. Okay? Okay, so that's all for today. Thank you very much. And I hope that was helpful.